Everyday Life with Guards Mares. Chapter 23. Lily Glamorspear's point of view. Specialist Lily Glamorspear literally could not believe what she was seeing right then. Instead of purging the unclean and ordering her to kill the vile mutant Bapony that stood before her, Anonymous, royal engineers of the twin princesses, had done practically the exact opposite. He'd invited the beast to come clothing shopping with him. And the violent monster smiled back at him. If the great lord wishes, I am bound to follow them at the Tartarus itself. Her purple VIP laughed in response. <laughs> I've heard about dying for fashion, but I don't think we need to go that far for a decent wardrobe. But wait, purple VIP? Anonymous isn't supposed to be purple. Squeezing her eyes shut to clear them had no effect. When Lily opened them again, he still looked purple to her. Blinking repeatedly, she looked out the window. The sky was purple and the clouds were purple too. She turned back to the room before her. Everything and everyone had a purple tint. I'm mana burning! That was the only explanation that fit, although it didn't make much sense. As eager as Lily had been for a fight, she hadn't done more than keep her horn at an elevated standby level. And the modest trickle of mana that required shouldn't be doing that to her. While she pondered the problem, Lily had a passing awareness of Lieutenant Violetta giving a salute and heading towards the door. Without thinking, Lily straightened up and pulled it open for her, rendering a detached salute as her lieutenant departed the room. Meanwhile, Anonymous headed behind the partition wall that divided off his bed and dressing area, and Lily heard him shut the door to his washroom. As the door closed, Sergeant Ebenshield looked over in Lily's direction. And the instant she did, Lily felt her blood boil over again. The bat was going to try and do something monstrous now that the lieutenant was gone, she was sure of it. The urge to strike first was almost overwhelming, but if Lily really was mana burning, then she had to shut everything down, or else things would get much worse for her. She'd just have to take a chance that the Bat Pony didn't recognize her weakness. Reluctantly, Lily relinquished her grasp on the arcane flows. Like a sledgehammer to her brain after a late night drinking binge, she was instantly struck by a throbbing headache. Oh yeah, she was definitely mana burning alright. And now, she was suffering withdrawal. The pain was so intense that she couldn't help but let out a quiet moan, putting one hoof up to her brow and wiping away the sweat that had already started to form. Are you unwell, Specialist Glamorspear? Fuck, she noticed. Act casual. I'm fine, Sergeant. Evan Shield didn't seem to buy it, as she walked right up to her, putting her face right in front of Lily's, just as she'd done with Corporal Bound. It's like she was a foal trying to get a reaction out of a pony on silent and still guard duty at the palace gates. If you are unveil, I can accompany the Great Lord to retrieve his clothes alone. Oh, as if! Instead of lying to her again, Lily decided to try and turn the tables. Why do you keep calling him the Great Lord? No pony else calls him that! Sergeant Bloodsucker blinked her eyes and withdrew her head slightly. The Royal Engineer sits on the greatest council of lords in Equestria. Does that not make him a Great Lord? Or have I been misinformed? Wow, she had just no clue about how society worked these days. Well, that's what you get for sleeping in a coffin for hundreds of years. If Lily couldn't lay the smack down with magical spears, she might as well drop some knowledge bombs on her instead. You're right, but no pony uses the term Great Lord anymore. Even referring to him as a lord is stretching etiquette in the modern era. Ponies in positional lordships like his are addressed by their job title, like Chancellor or Royal Engineer, not the noble rank. Or you can just say Sir or Ma'am. I see. Lily's eyes went wide as she watched the vampire bow her head to her. What the fuck? What kind of surgeon first class bows to a specialist? Thank you for correcting me on the equestrian customs, current specialist Glamorspear. Corporal Bound is right. Not only is this vile creature of the night lacking an essential training of how to handle very important ponies, she didn't have a clue about how to behave in polite society. It was going to take everything Lily had to keep her from embarrassing the three of them once they stepped outside the castle. As Ebenshield took up a position flanking the other side of the door, Lily found herself overcome with anxiety over what should just be a simple visit to a shop in town. What if she said something appalling to one of the other guards on their way there? What if she did that weird get up right in your muzzle to talk to you thing to some pony not under orders to just stand there and take it and a fight broke out? What kind of scandal would she cause just walking outside amidst the public? Lily vividly pictured terrified Canelot citizens fleeing in panic before their group. Fuck, what if she tripped up in front of every pony in the tailor shop and they kicked Anonymous out before he could even get a stuff? Wait... A minute ago, she wanted to turn that bat into a bloody smear on the carpet. Now she was desperately worried about social gaffes? What was going on with her mood swings today? Taking a deep breath, Lily shut her eyes. She recalled the symptoms of acute mana poisoning in order of severity as they were drilled into her. Blurred vision, purple haze, exhaustion, headaches, emotional instability, nausea and vomiting, seizures, coma, and finally, sudden death. Emotional instability! Even though her horn had been cold for a full minute now, Lily was still mana burning. Today, she'd done a little more than levitate a few things and maintain high magical readiness for half an hour, but yesterday she barely used any magic at all. Although, she remembered drawing on a steady trickle to help with the general feeling of exhaustion. 
Two days ago, of course, there was the massive overexpenditure during the fight with Killfeather, but that was supposed to have been abated by the MXP games totem. Then again, unicorns usually didn't go so far overboard with magic during the games. Maybe its protective effects didn't work on mana poisoning? Behind the partition wall, Lily heard Anonymous' washroom door open again. It wouldn't be long now until he was ready to go. Lily racked her brain trying to figure things out. And then it hit her. After the ceremony when she'd been inducted into the Order of the Ram, Lily remembered chatting up a cult with a cute jawline at the reception, one who had been a hero of the games. He described taking what should have been a fatal blow during a match and then having a constant dull pain for days afterwards. So, as if instead of receiving one deadly blow, he'd received hundreds of merely painful ones spread out over time. So did the totems just... draw out an injury instead of suppressing it? So, instead of seizures, coma, or death, Lily was just gonna have to deal with the lesser symptoms for a few days? Symptoms that were made worse whenever she used her magic. Ugh. The throbbing in her head kicked into high gear, as if to confirm her thoughts. In the span of an hour, she'd had a roller coaster of excessive fear, paranoia, hatred, and anxiety. At least now she was aware of the problem, so maybe she could deal with it. Well, I'm ready to go. How about the two of you? The Royal Engineer stepped out from behind the partition, now fully dressed and ready for the public. Your escort is assembled, Great Lord. So much for Sergeant Fangtooth over there taking Lily's advice. I hope it's appropriate of me to have asked you to join us, Sergeant. I must admit, I'm still not entirely used to the idea of having retainers at my beck and call like this. It is the privilege granted to your lordship, sir. Oh, so now she uses the correct term. <sighs> Whatever. But her answer didn't seem to be quite sufficient, and Anonymous looked expectantly in Lily's direction. Specialist, I'd appreciate some more of your candor. That got her a strange glance from the sergeant, which Lily ignored. She took a moment to collect herself, and for once, there was no overriding emotion imposing itself on her thoughts. Sir, most of the time one or two of us will be scheduled to be on standby duty upstairs, waiting for your call. Otherwise, we're never more than a half hour away occupied with other light duties. She shrugged. To be perfectly honest, sir, if you're going out into the city, you'd often be doing us a favor calling upstairs for the rest of your escorts. Speaking for myself, I'd rather be working with my VIP than idling back at the palace. Crossing over to pick up his hat and walking stick from the rack by the door, Anonymous seems pleased by her answer. Really? Now you have me curious to find out what the others think. But for now, I think two escorts should be enough. Let's go. Without the specialist and the sergeant both pulled open the doors and headed out. Once they got out into the city, Lily was still able to hold it together, but only barely. The moments of emotional calm as she'd left the Royal Engineer's chambers had been all too brief. The feeling had started creeping up as she was walking the halls of the palace itself. With Anonymous in tow and Sergeant Ebonshield beside her, she'd felt them. Eyes. Eyes. All over her. Ordinarily, Lily enjoyed being the center of attention, but this wasn't like that at all. These were judging, questioning, cruel eyes. Every side hallway seemed to have a group of guards eyeballing her, whispering dark things amongst themselves. It wasn't true, she told herself. It was just the mana burn blowback screwing with her mental state. But actively trying to disbelieve what her own sick mind was trying to tell her could only get her so far. Worse still, knowing that the paranoia that she was experiencing was just a symptom of an illness made her want to take up the sergeant's offer and report to medical. And that just fueled delusions of dire consequences for her career if she did so, or for her VIP if she left him alone with a vampiric creature. Exiting the palace had brought a merciful end to the side corridors and random groups of guards, and therefore a gradual relaxation from the feeling of being watched. It was still early enough in the day that only a few ponies were out and about in the streets of Candelot. Those who generally had their muzzles to the ground were more interested in getting to where they needed to be than to pay attention to a unicorn, bat pony, and tall hairless monkey. They made their way to Candelot's fashion district, Bull Street. Still, being in public brought its own emotional horrors. Instead of the madness of being watched by every pony, she had to deal with the terror of being spotted. Visions danced in Lily's head of just one or two of those citizens lifting their heads for just a moment and crying out once they noticed her group. Ruckus, rabble, and embarrassment followed. It made her want to kick her heels and burst into a gallop, but it also made her want to slink into the shadows, hug the walls, and glance nervously around every corner before turning it. The conflicting pulls made her headache even worse, but they were a bit easier to ignore that way. Finally, they'd made it into the store, Bridal Path Clothiers in Pool Street. Despite the presence of a monster in their group, the sales pony had been unflappably obsequious, welcoming Anon back like a dear friend. Oh, Sir Anonymous, it is most excellent to see you again. I hope you will be able to spare a moment for a glimpse at our latest fashions this morning. And so on and so on, paying absolutely no attention to Specialist Glamour Spear or Sergeant Ebonshield. They were treating her like most VIPs treated their guards ponies, to be honest. But in her current state of mind, that suited her just fine. Soon enough, the Royal Engineer was in the changing room with a few neat bundles of freshly tailored clothes. In the reserved quiet confines of a Colt's clothing shop, Lily found some tranquil relief from the mana poisoning that had been driving her crazy this morning. 
The two sales ponies on duty busy themselves with adjusting displays and rearranging clothes, one of them softly humming to himself as he worked. The windows were full of displays and decorations that gave dignified privacy to the mirrored fitting area. The musk of old wood and strong coltish cologne mixed together to form a comfortable, reassuring aroma. Even Sergeant Ebenshield seemed thoroughly unthreatening at the moment. Feeling able to relax, Lily took the liberty of hopping up onto one of the guest sofas. Deep breaths. It'll all be over soon. Jesus, she is not giving up with those ideas. I mean, eventually she's gonna get used to her, but when will that happen? And I hope it's soon. Anyway, let's get on to our very stylish donators. Top donators, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. TacoCat598, Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Roland, Crazy Claire 557 Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyrae, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Cadge, Runescythe 9852, Madman Stan, Leslie Prickett, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hut Zaza, and many more fabulous people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.